Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to continue with the Japanese environment that we were working with a couple of weeks ago. So uh, this is where we left off. Uh, we managed to texture and uh, prepare a lot of the different parts of the scene. I actually made the fog a little bit less intense. And of course, there's more things that I want to do, right? Like this is not finished like by a long shot. Uh, we're still missing a couple of things. But today we're going to be focusing on two main things. I want to fix the street right here, which is definitely going to give us more realism. I want to do the textures for the mosaics that we have here on the floor, which is also going to be quite important. And I want to show you how to do a little bit of this, like scattered terrain. We're going to be scattering some leaves around the, the environment. So that it looks like it's been abandoned for a little bit longer than, um, than what it might be. However, uh, we are going to be using some advanced stuff and some advanced concepts throughout this video. So if you're new to 3D, I just want to remind you that we have a lot of different courses that cover a lot of the different tools that we're going to be uh, looking at today. And you can check these courses for free in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. Very well. So let's start with the street. And for the street, I'm actually going to be using one of these assets right here. There we go. So as some of you guys know, if you have access to Substance 3D assets, which comes for free when you are subscribed to the Substance license, which I normally I'm against subscriptions, but I really like this one because it does give you some cool stuff. Uh, you have access to these really cool materials. And if you have the Substance Archive, which by the way, you can also get from uh, other sources, we can literally just drag that thing in here and use it. Now, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete these faces that we don't really need because we're not going to be seeing them. We're pretty much only going to be seeing this guys uh, at, at the most. And I'm going to UB and we're going to planar map this thing from the top, so the, from the Y axis and hit apply. As you can see, this will, will create a planar mapping from the whole thing. And yes, we're going to get a little bit of stretching right here, but it shouldn't be that bad. And if you want to get rid of every single bit of stretching, we could, of course, just control U to unfold this thing and then control L to lay it out. So now there should be no uh, stretching because everything is laid out properly. We're uh, wasting quite a bit of space, but since we're going to be using a tileable texture, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. I'm going to go to the Hypershade and we're going to be using the Substance plugin to just load in that archive. So I'm gonna press tab, and if I write substance, we have this substance node a texture, which allows us, as the name implies, to drag in from our assets folder, well, in this case, I have it on my substance folder right here, this slick asphalt SVSR. I'm gonna hit open, we're gonna load the texture right here, right now we're not seeing anything, but as soon as I go down here to the Arnold option and I say create workflow, or create network, sorry, it's gonna create the whole network that we need for this asphalt to be working properly. It's even gonna clear, create the displacement map, which I actually do wanna keep. It's gonna increase the render time a little bit, but it should give us some interesting effects. We'll see if it really works or if not, we'll just change it. So um, of course, one thing that I need to do here is I'm gonna change the name of this material to M underscore asphalt. There we go. And now I can just assign it right here. Assign existing material, M asphalt. Now I'm not using, or I am using the ACES workflow. So technically what we're seeing right here should be like the like the proper uh, textures. And you can see this is like way, way too uh, too big, right? So we're gonna go all the way down here to the place to the texture node. And we're gonna repeat this, let's try something like 10 times. And we'll check the size of the, of the grain. This actually looks quite nice. I think it's a good number. So let's save real quick and let's throw in a very quick render to see how this looks now. Uh, all of the textures should be uh, converted to the new, um, what's the word, to the new effect. However, I'm not seeing anything here. That's really weird. Let me go panels, Luther selected. That should be it. Actually, let me close this. I'm going to uh, reopen it because we changed a couple of things. So sometimes the render needs to update. There's another option uh, over here called um, render update full scene. That also works right there. So we're not seeing anything. I'm a little bit concerned about why that might be the case. We are getting one little like thing right here. Okay, it seems to be the displacement. As you can see right here, it 
It says the P plane displacement something and something's not working. Okay, let's let's check it out. So first thing I'm gonna do to troubleshoot this is I'm gonna delete the connection here on the displacement. And uh, if we render now, since we're no longer using displacement, there we go. We should see the, the proper things here. Now, the floor is not on a position or in a place where we might need like a lot of displacement. So we might be able to like not use it, to be honest. But I kind of want to have it to be like, it would be nice to have a little bit of displacement. So let's try to t troubleshoot that real quick. First thing, this guy, of course, needs to be uh, added here on the, on the Arnold components from the shape node. We need to change the subdivisions and give this a couple of subdivisions. We're going to use Cutman Clark. Let's give this five subdivision. This means that at render time, this thing is going to be subdivided five times. Now, of course, we need to reconnect this thing right here to the displacement shader. And let's give it another shot. Okay, there you go. So now you can see that it is actually displacing. You can see the, the spikes right there. But the problem is it's displacing it in a really, really bad way. So we need to go back to the hyper shade. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the intensity. So the scale, let's do something like a 0.1. And let's give this a shot. Back to here. There we go. There we go. So with a 0.1, you can see that we are getting the displacement. It's it's pushing and pulling the vertices in a nice way. By the way, if you don't know about displacement, we do have a video. I recommend you check it out there on the channel. Um, we talked about how to set it up properly and everything. But yeah, like this is, it's, it's working, but it's, it's way too much, right? So let's go back to the scale. Let's do a 0 0.01. So 10, 10, uh, 10 times less than what we have right there. And if we render now, as we're about to see right here, we should get a little bit of displacement on the street, but it's not going to be as uh, intense, but it's going to give us, you know, something interesting. This is noise, by the way. This is the denoiser trying to solve everything, but as the image keeps going like higher and higher, we should get cleaner, uh, cleaner results on the on the asphalt as well. And it still might be a little bit too much. So there we go. But not that bad. Not that bad. Still a little bit too much, I would say. So we're at uh, 0 0.01. Let's try 0 0.003. Should be really, 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 really. And some of you might be like, why even bother having displacement if it's going to be that low? It's going to give you some like cleaner shadows and interesting shadows. So it might be worth it. And it's not really increasing the render time as much. So it's a, it's a good thing, I think. It's a good compromise. So there we go. As uh, this thing keeps going, the render keeps going, and we get a cleaner image, we're going to see the displacement. Now, if we want to go really displaced, that's fine. You can, uh, of course, uh, choose whatever fits best for your particular scene. But there we go. So now this sort of like effects I really, really like because as you can see, it gives us a, a nice breakdown there on the on the street. Now, the tiles themselves, all of these tiles right here, we're actually going to have to model them like manually. So I'm going to select all of those tiles, all of these tiles, all of these tiles right here. Okay, and I'm going to isolate them for just a second. And these are all the tiles that we have on our, on our scene. I'm going to grab all of them. And uh, we're just going to do a very, very basic UV planar mapping from the top, from the y-axis. So there we go. This, um, actually, one thing I should have done before doing this. Let's see if it works. Okay, it worked. So I'm going to grab everything. I'm going to combine everything into a single object. This is going to make it so that it's a little bit more um, easy to manage as a single object. And if we take a look at the UVs, this is what we're going to get. Now, I'm going to do another UV projection right now because it, it came out a little bit wrong. I'm going to go to planar mapping, and we're going to do keep image, image with height ratio. This will make sure that on our UV maps, everything is perfectly square. See that? Now, this is actually ignoring one very important factor, and that's the fact that we're doing it on both sides of the object. So we're going to have reverse UVs on the other side. But since we're not going to be using displacement, we can actually like get away with this. The ideal thing would be to go to all of the under sides of the elements and just delete them, but that's going to take way, way too long. So we're just going to keep it like this. The problem we have, though, in regards to UVs is that these guys right here are not are really, really small. So even if we gave this a 4K texture, this would be really, really, like, small. So we're going to be using UDEMs. I'm going to select all of the shells right here. I'm going to say tools, or sorry, modify. We're going to lay this out. We're going to do a layout right here. And we're going to use four UDEMs, okay? We're going to use two 4K UDEMs, or rather, four 2K UDEMs. So modify, layout, and we're going to do four UDEMs right here. And I'm going to say layout UVs. 
What should happen is this. As you can see, all of the tiles get like uh, properly aligned everywhere. Now, I hate this organization. It looks really, really awful. So let's do another layout. And I'm going to try a shell pre-rotation pre align uh, X to V. Let's try that. There we go. That's a lot better. This looks a little bit more or a little bit closer to what I would expect. So now with four UV tiles, this is called a UDIM, by the way. It's an advanced way to uh, to do um, to do this sort of mapping. We can bring this into uh, Substance Painter and uh, generate a very nice uh, looking like variation on the colors and stuff. So I'm going to export this thing real quick. Export selection. We're going to go to Assets. And we have here Tunnel. This is going to be called uh, Tiles. And we're going to go, of course, to Substance Painter. The reason why I want to go to Substance Painter, I want to like vary the amount of roughness and stuff that we have. I might draw like a like a pool of blood or maybe some dirt on the on the side of the tiles. Something that makes it look like it's uh, like it's like a little bit more um, used, right? So over here, I'm going to say File, New. By the way, we also have courses about Substance Painter if you want to check them out. We're going to select the tiles themselves. So let's go to our our assets right here, tunnel, and we're going to select our tiles. Uh, I don't want to do 4K, 4K is way too much. Let's do 2K. We're going to use UV tile workflow and hit OK. And this is what we're going to get. We're going to get our like nice little element right here. Now, we do need to do the bakes real quick. Even if they're like low poly bakes, that's fine. Just to get like basic things such as the ambient occlusion and the, um, what's the word, and the... Um, the thickness, the roughness, well, not the roughness, the, the curvature and stuff like that. It, it, it's just handy. It's just handy. So it's always a good idea to have a little bit of uh, information about these elements. You can see it's relatively fast. The new baker inside of Substance Painter is really, really good. Like we can get things done really, really quickly. And now we're ready to, to texture. And we're going to keep the texturing really, really, really simple. I'm actually going to use this a concrete uh, simple, this one, or concrete dusty. And the reason I want this, as you can see, it gives us a lot of like variation on the color. Right, like every single tile is slightly different, so we're not having like a like complete flat element. However, one thing I'm gonna do, you can see it's kind of like bumpy, and it's kind of like big. I can tile this like three times. It's gonna give us a little bit better detail. And I'm gonna go to the uh, properties right here. I'm not gonna remove the height information. I don't want any height information. Or we can keep the height information, but just lower it. So we can go to the height information here on the layers, and we can lower this. So it's, it's just barely like modifying the silhouette, something like that. There we go. Now, on the reference image, which I should have somewhere along here. There we go. This is the, the reference image. You can see it's this sort of like pastel color, right? And it gets this sort of like hueish uh, tone due to the, the way that um, the ambient light is affecting this. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a fill layer with just color information. I'm just going to give it this sort of like pastel tone. And then we can add this on the color as an overlay, for instance. Oh, overlay. And play around with the opacity to get like a like a nice cream tone like this. Might be a little bit too like dirty, so let's push this up a little bit more. Maybe not as saturated, something like this. And that way we're controlling how this looks by using two materials. One is the concrete and the other one is this sort of like beige effect. Now that we have this, I do want to control the glossiness because as you can see, the glossiness on the concrete dusty is very intense. So it, it pretty much like overwrites everything and it's like very dull, right? So what I want to do here is I'm going to add again a fill layer. This is going to be a basic rough fill layer and the roughness is going to be quite low. And what we can do is we can go to the roughness channel of this guy. Right now it's set to normal. where We can again like overlay this to generate a little bit of berry cup. See that? So we go from this to this, and then we can even like play around with the intensity to decide how much or how little like glossiness we want. So if we want this to be a little bit more glossiness. We can also go to this one and, and just play around. I recommend pressing the letter C on your keyboard and jumping to the roughness channel, which is this one, so that you can see the variation. Look at that beautiful variation. If we had this set to like a normal thing, it would be just like Black, like no variation at all. This is what really brings things like together and makes them look super, super cool. So I think this is fine. I think it's a little bit glossy, to be honest. So I'm gonna grab this one and just push it up a little bit more. And we still should have like a nice variation there. There, look at that. We still have a nice variation on the glossiness. If it's still uh, too much, again, we can just keep pressing this or keep pushing this to get less contrast. 
and we'll get something that looks interesting. We could also go to this one right here and maybe increase it to get as much like variation as possible. And this is what we would expect to see on the Ar on Arnold as well. Now on the on the Maya file here, you can see that we have uh, like this things. It's uh, when the corner hits, and all of these things are close to the walls. So you would expect those parts to be slightly dirtier, right? I'm gonna use a rust. I like using rust for dirt because it has a lot of like a visual interest as well. I'm gonna add a black mask, and then if I go to my brush here, I can grab something like a dirt spots. No, that's a little bit too intense. Like dry mud, dry mud looks good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start painting, as you can see, some damage on this areas, which is where I would expect there to be a little bit more uh, dirt. That's a little bit too soft. Let's go for dirt spots. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now on the inside of the tunnel, I would expect there to be a little bit less. So we're probably we're gonna have a little bit of more of this dirt as we get uh, on the outer edges. There are ways in which you could uh, import the walls as well, so that you can get a, a better like ambient occlusion. And this would of course give you a better result as well. But this one's working quite nice. And as we get like closer and closer to the inside of the tunnel, we'll probably lose a little bit of that uh, effect. Uh, we're not really gonna paint like the back parts right there. Maybe just like a like a couple spots on the inside, just to again break up some of the of the silhouettes or of the glossiness that we might have in certain parts of the floor. But we can keep it keep it simple. Being very very loose here. Now here on the very like border of the of the street, I think it would be a good idea to add. <coughs> wow. Add more of this. It wouldn't be a video from Abraham if it wasn't if there weren't some sneezes, right? I hate my allergies, guys. I really hate them. There we go. Now I usually like to set this to overlay. And again, play with like the intensity. Oh wait, let's go. This one should be normal. Let's go to the base color. The base color should be set to overlay and play with the intensity because we don't want to like make it super, super intense, right? Like we want to make it a little bit more interesting. And uh, we could even add a secondary layer of uh, rust. I'm gonna add one more. Set this to overlay as well. Right click, add the generator, and we're gonna add or add the black mask. And then on that black mask, we're gonna add the generator. We're gonna add a dirt generator. This is gonna go to all of the crevices of the elements. I'm gonna bring the triplant, the crunch amount down. But as you can see, this really hits all of the crevices a little bit more. So that's like the dust that we would expect to have on the on the overall thing. So now that we have this, uh, we're ready to bring this back into um, into Maya, and I'm gonna show you how to connect this. I'm gonna say File. We need to export the textures, of course, and we're gonna export them to the project that we're working on. Remember, everything should be on source images by default. We're gonna select there. And uh, this is the important bit. We're gonna select this as Arnold uh, Udem, or Arnold AI standard, sorry. Because on the export, as you can see, it's automatically going to give us the UDEM uh, terminology, the 1.001 uh, uh, thing. And that is going to make everything just work. Now, here's the, the next step. How do we connect this UDEM textures to this guys right here? Well, we're going to use, again, the Substance plugin to make this a little bit easier. We're going to use this button called Apply Workflow to Maps. And we're going to select multiple maps. We're going to go to our source images. And we're going to select here on the tiles, the roughness 1001, normal 1001, metalness 1001, and base color 1001. We really don't need the height and uh, we don't need all the, all the other ones, and I'll explain why. Now that it knows which one it is, we're gonna hit apply. And what that beautiful plugin does is it connects everything in the hyper shade. It will connect everything on the hyper shade as this new AI standard, uh, whatever number is next, six. Let's call this M tiles. There we go. And it will automatically set everything so that it knows that it is using, um, what's the word? Or so that it knows that it's using the proper workflow, like the color management and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about it because it's already set up for you. Now here, what we do need to do is we need to change the UV tiling mode to UDEM. And as you can see, it will automatically detect that we're using a UDEM uh, like uh, workflow. And it will automatically detect that we have four tiles uh, on this like maps. So let's just change this to UDEM. 
now let's just change this to Udemy. There we go. Let's save this. Let's close this real quick. Let's save it. And to this, guys, I'm going to right click, assign existing material, and we're going to yeah, assign the M tiles material. Now, we might not see the color on all of them. And the reason why might the way that might not happen is because we have not loaded the elements. I don't recommend you do that, by the way. I'm actually going to press this button right here, which is going to change everything to just the standard material. It's just extra resources that you don't want to be wasting on your on your scene. And when we render, we should get like the proper um, the proper thing. So over here, uh, we're just going to say Arnold and render. And let's take a look at how that looks. I'm expecting to see all of the tiles change to the materials. It will take a little while. You can see it's processing because it's converting all of the tiles, the 16 tiles. It's converting them to the uh, to the new workflow. I'm going to pause real quick and I'll show you the result in just a second. There we go. Now, I made the mistake of uh, using the perspective shape instead of the shotgun. Let's jump into the shotgun real quick and look at that. With a very, very simple process, we now have this tiles, uh, like populating our, our whole stuff and uh, making it look quite nice. You can see the variation on the on the colors, the variation on the roughness. And uh, yeah, look at that. It looks beautiful, beautiful. It looks like, like an abandoned uh, sidewalk. Look at the, at the stains right here on the border of the element. Look at the stains here near the walls. That's the kind of stuff that we want to create with this scene to, to generate that very clean looking detail. Now you can see that there's a couple of tiles here that are actually touching the ground and um, and they're not looking great. A couple of things we can do here, but to be honest, the easiest one is to just go into phase mode and just like push this guys up a little bit more. So we see that they're underneath and we're seeing the floor. We used, uh, if you haven't seen the earlier videos for this uh, project, we used a tool that was a variant or creating some variation on the, on this guys. And that's why some of these guys seem to be underneath the, the ground. Check. It's those two triangles, those two triangles. And that's pretty much the ones that we really see. Some of the others are actually quite hidden. Now you can see the, the street is, uh, it's looking a little bit weird, right? Like this line right there looks really, really odd. So it might be a good idea to grab the ground that's underneath this thing. We need to separate it from the sidewalk. So I'm going to select this line right here. I'm going to say edit mesh, detach. And then I'm going to say uh, mesh separate. So this is going to be its own object. And I'm just going to assign a very basic Arnold AI standard surface. It's going to be like a dark rough material. Like we really like, don't worry about this. It's just, we're never going to see it, right? Like we, we barely see the sidewalk on this side, but we can later fix it. And, um, that's going to give us this nice, like, uh, uh, I think it's called the grout uh, in, in English, which is the line that device like tiles like this. As for this thing right here, the, the actual sidewalk, they're usually painted, or at least here in Mexico, they're painted yellow. So I'm going to sign a new material, Arnold AI standard surface. I'm going to go for like a, like a desaturated yellow orangey color. Definitely increase the roughness. Later on, we'll, we'll, we'll change it to like a proper material, but just for now to to see how things are, are being uh, created. There we go, it's like the, like the paint, right? Like a, like a painted uh, sidewalk. I still think it's a little bit too, too yellow. So let's, let's go a little bit more towards the reds and desaturate it, darken it a little bit more. Maybe increase the roughness a little bit more. So it's like, like old paint. There we go, it looks a little bit better. Cool. So with this, uh, we've successfully uh, textured the, the street and the tiles. Again, guys, remember, I'm speed running this. I'm, I'm going really, really fast. If this was done for production, you would definitely take way, way, way more time doing this to get the, the exact sort of uh, result that you're looking for. Um, this is just a, a, a demonstration of how things are done. Remember that, again, we have the full courses, hours and hours and hours of content where you can learn all of these techniques. So I'm going to show you one last thing, which I think is going to be really cool, which is uh, some leaves. So I have here in Photoshop, yesterday's cover as well. Um, I actually kept Photoshop open. And we have this guys right here. So I got this image from the internet and we're gonna be using this to create uh, some leaves inside of Maya so that we can like distribute them and, and have them pretty much everywhere. So what I need to do here is I need to create a transparent map, an opacity map. This is pretty much our color map. And I'm also going to show you like the old school way of creating some details for these elements. So first things first, we need to like cut these things. I'm just going to use the magic wand. Just delete the, the white background. 
and let's delete this layer right here. There we go. So I'm going to add just a very basic like middle tone gray to see. As you can see, we still have a little bit of white. Uh, easiest way to lead that white is to go uh, select color range, select the white color right there. Go to this guy again, select color range and we select this line right here. We select this with the color picker right there. We can increase the fussiness a little bit and uh, there we go. We should be able to delete a little bit more. I mean, it's really not that big of a deal if things are a little bit wrong there. I'm gonna control U to go into saturation. I definitely wanna desaturate this, make them a little bit darker. Maybe even like move the, the tone a little bit more into the like the reds, browns. I really want them to be a little bit like more like dead leaves. There we go, something like that. And uh, this is gonna be our color. Now, one thing that I do recommend, I recommend picking a general color and filling the back layer like this. Again, you can see, still got a little bit of an issue there. I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna say, um, select, modify, and we're gonna contract two pixels. Control I, actually two pixels was a little bit too much. Select, modify, contract one pixel, and then control shift I to invert the selection and delete. There we go. So now uh, we have a cleaner cut on the, on the leaves. Now we're uh, we're gonna save this. Control Shift, uh, Control Alt S. And we're gonna save, it, of course, on source images. It's gonna be leaves underscore. Oh, actually, before we do that, before we do that, let's do the alpha channel because we can already save this on the alpha channel. So I'm gonna Control Click and uh, I'm gonna go to Channels and I'm gonna create a new channel. And as you can see, this new channel already has the cut uh, like laid there. So that's pretty much what we want. So if we save this, I'm gonna save this as a PNG, and this is gonna be called leaves. And we go to Maya now. We can create a new plane. Now we do need to bring the colors back here. There we go. I'm gonna assign a new material to this plane. Arnold, AI standard surface. It's gonna be called M leaves and on the color i'm going to be assigning a file and this file of course is going to be the leaves there we go if i press number six you can see we have that thing right there but what we're going to do is we're also going to go here to the hyper shade and if we go to the leaves material that we just created we can grab the alpha channel from this color and go into the opacity I need to plug this on all three channels. But when we do that, we should get the uh, cuts. We might not see it here. It's a little bit weird. But if we render, take a look here. Ah, huh, that's weird. But it seems like Something happened on Photoshop. Okay, that's weird. Because we do have the alpha channel here. Give me just one second. Oh, for some reason the alpha was not exported properly. So here's the again the the Mexican <laughs> quick way to do this. We just uh, we just create our own alpha, pretty much. Like this. So that's our alpha. It's gonna yeah, save this. The computer leaves alpha. I think it's because it's expecting an RGB instead of an alpha channel, but it's fine. It's just a mask. At the end of the day, it's just a mask that we want. We go here, we do an image um, or a file texture. There we go. And here on the file texture, we bring in the leaves uh, alpha. And the out color goes into opacity. Now, if we render, we get the leaves. Okay. So how do we get those leaves out of this plane? Oh, that's a great question, right? And this is going to be the final part of the series. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to go to the top view. Let's turn on our textures so we can actually see what's going on. And what we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna clean 
pretty much all of the edges here. Control and delete, always control and delete. This is very important. A lot of people, when they delete edges, they just delete them and that keeps the bird C alive and uh, it makes uh, a lot of different problems. So now with my cut tool, I'm gonna just start cutting this guys out. Like this. And I'm gonna go from here. here just close there it's fine I know these are all angons and it looks horrible don't worry it's part of the drill there we go so we can delete this huge face right here and then we can grab this guy right here I'm gonna say edit mesh extract now this is its own like thing and then we can say same thing for this one Edit Mesh, Extract. There we go. Now, if you want to be super clean about this, what you should do is you should try to cut the shape of the object that you are doing the transparency for as close as possible to the border of the object. That's like the ideal, ideal thing. There we go. Uh, and yes, these are angons right now. Like huge, huge, huge angons. That's fine. Uh, but right now, since uh, we want to do this a little bit faster, it's it's perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna grab all of these guys. I'm just gonna say edit mesh triangulate or just mesh triangulate. This should solve any any issue pretty much. And uh, now what we could even do is we could grab some of these vertices and with soft selection, we can give them a little bit of curvature. Okay. This is pretty much how they do like this kind of objects for like games and stuff. Because you can't really like create a lot of uh, polygons in games. We could even go with our cut tool and just cut across like that. And then grab like this vertices right here. Just feel like uh, a little bit of a concave uh, element right there. I'll do it again over here. Just grab a nice line over or around the leaf. Grab this points right here. Just like push them down. Grab the little like tail, push it up. And there we go. Now we have uh, several leaves that I know when we render are gonna look like uh, like nice little leaves. Of course, gonna grab all of them, delete history, phrase transformation, center pivot, so that we um, don't have any issue. Seems like uh, Maya is already freaking out. It's usually, I don't know why I get the dis this display issue where I would just like do something and the things don't update properly. If you guys know how to solve that, I would love this. I I've been having this issue for so long. Honestly, I don't know what that, uh, what it, what might be uh, causing it. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Now we have these leaves and of course we can just uh, duplicate them and, um, and move them around, position them everywhere. There's a, a very cool trick. I'll, I'll show it later. There's a very cool trick we could use for uh, like randomly like placing these things on top of an object. Uh, we're gonna be using mesh for that, but I think our video is running a little bit too high right now. So I'm gonna try to, to wrap it up real quick here. So just moving a couple of these guys. You can just grab the whole thing here and just duplicate and move a little bit and just, especially when we, where we see things are like uh, colliding a little bit, it might be a good idea to just Push them up or out, where it looks a little bit too repetitive. Just like move them around, rotate them around. Oh, it seems like it's some texturing thing. There we go. Let's save real quick. Let's do one final render for today. And look at that. Now we have these leaves. They're a little bit too big. Some of them are floating around, uh, but we're getting there. We're, we're getting there. I think probably like two or three more videos with this uh, with this scene right here, and we're going to be in a good position. Now, I did mention this one, show you one last thing, which is the old school method of doing uh, the roughness, because right now you can see that things are really shiny, like the leaves look really fake. So I'm going to go back here to Photoshop, and uh, this guy right here, I'm going to press Control-Shift-U to desaturate it. Now, remember, the, the wider we go, the rougher it gets. So this is actually a really good roughness. We can, of course, play with this a little bit more to intensify a couple of elements right there. Something that like looks good. And then this one, we also should uh, desaturate it. 
So this right here is going to be our um, leaf's roughness. There we go. Back to Maya. We're going to grab the material and we're going to go to the roughness. We're going to input a file. And this file is going to be, of course, the leaf's roughness. Important thing, this one should be set to raw. And on the Arnold attributes, or sorry, on the extra attributes, there's one option to change this to alpha is luminance. That's also very important. There we go, this one. And now we can do one more render. You can see how the roughness should be changing on the leaves. Hmm, I didn't see that much of a change, to be honest. Are we using the proper thing here? Yeah. That's weird. Should be working. Maybe the light is just on a specific angle and that's why they're shining a little bit too much. Uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. We're going to stop it right here. Thank you for watching 36 minutes. I know it's a lot of time, but hopefully you've learned a couple of cool tricks along the way. We're going to keep working on this. I'll see you back on Monday. Remember, Monday we're going to have our uh, live stream. So we're going to be live at 9 a.m. Mexico time, 8.30 p.m. Uh, India time. So if you want to tune in, make sure to like, share, and subscribe so that we can get you the information and the notifications as soon as we go live. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.